for those um, that haven't worked in elite sport yet, um, what would be some, uh, I guess, do's and then and equally some don'ts? So for someone that is really rigid and, and you're and trying to work in a team, uh, how does that show up in a, in a team format where you're trying to collaborate that can be a, a bit of an issue for a high-performance team, do you think? The first thing there, I think, is to ask ask the question of their perspective on things to gain an insight as to their thought processes. And, um, and secondly, make sure that the goal or the obstacle that you're trying to pivot around is really well defined because if it's not and your, your interpretation of what we're trying to achieve versus my interpretation of what we're trying to achieve are two different things. Well, then mm. we're never going to work together. We're never going to work efficiently together. Whereas if, if we're clearly aligned on what the end goal is, um, I think that's half, half the battle. How do you have awareness around whether you need to be adaptable or the person in front of you needs to be adaptable? Maybe when you're now in a leadership position or managerial you know, position, maybe giving feedback to someone who's working under you or vice versa, uh, someone who's above you. How do you sort of yeah, navigate through that? That's a really, really good question. Uh, if that was me now, the first question I'm asking myself is how do I contribute to the problem and have I done all I can to minimize my contribution to that problem? Um, because I think it's unfortunately, this isn't just of, of us as practitioners in high performance sport, but I think just in society in general, we're a blame culture first. So if something goes wrong, it's quite easy just to point the finger and say that you're not pulling your weight or I told you so or, or whatever it might be. How much of that do you think is planned from a from a coach's perspective? Like is it this session's going to be, you know, we're going to challenge them, the athletes all the time. If the drill's being done too well, we're going to, we're going to make it harder. Uh, or, you know, is it something that you periodize through blocks or is it something that is a bit more individual maybe with athletes that you think are, you know, are already really elite? Uh, they've been doing it for quite some time. So it's more something that you're just constantly sort of challenging that individual player. I think it depends on where the athletes are at, obviously. Like if you've got younger athletes, there's still that element of learning to train, and learning mm -hmm. the, what, the, what the basics and fundamentals are. Um, and then as as the athletes become more successful and they're more in tuned with, with their bodies and the outcomes that they're working towards, then they should actually be able to challenge, challenge us. So you, you can be strategic then in periodizing it in certain ways you touched on before how important purpose and intent is like there's the the intent and purpose of the drill when it's come from within uh, go up a notch like in terms of engagement when it's come from the athletes uh, yeah i believe so yeah just just subjectively just just watching i think that um if if you have created something i think it's just kind of natural for you yeah. to do that um and also like just a change of voice is is quite nice too. So when the athletes see that that someone's developed something, but the coach also supports that, like that, that's a big, big piece of that. If the coach was in that situation was to, you know, push it aside and say, no, that's not what we're doing, and and you know, not have the bigger picture in mind, um, you maybe crush that for the sake of crushing it. So mm. yeah, definitely I think that when you can facilitate that in your athletes, then they're probably going to be able to do it like when it, when it matters as well. For those um, that perhaps need to work on their adaptability and maybe aren't aware of it yet, uh, when you're leading teams, what are some ways that you can try and build that awareness or, or improve adaptability in staff? It's, I think it's developed from you know, life experience and also like on, on job as well. Mm -hmm. Um I think as as kids, as teenagers, as young adults, it's I said you know, you've got to develop those critical thinking skills. And there's you know, masters, you know, masters programs in high performance sport that are specifically aimed at developing those those thinking skill sets. Um, it's like being accustomed to being faced with divert, with adversity and being tested, both formally and informally, in my opinion. Um, and you could do that through a number of different ways. Um, traveling and going and throwing yourself in a different, you know, non-English non speaking countries and, and 
and working out a ways to order coffee, order food, um, pay for things that you're not accustomed to doing. 